estamos aquí para la revista Lee Más y el día de hoy nos encontramos con... Elise Koba. <laughs> okay. Well, now, which fantasy authors did you enjoy reading besides C.S. Lewis, uh, Tolkien, those that you already mentioned? I, I enjoy reading a lot of contemporaries. Um, Danielle Jensen comes to mind, Susan Denner, of, her, of course, Catherine Purdy. Um, she's wonderful as well. Growing up, I read just a mix of books, and I feel so bad because I can remember the book titles, but I can't remember the authors right now. But I remember loving a book called The Silver Kiss. Um, I read Magic Casement by Dave Duncan. I do remember his name. Um, so just a lot. Oh, okay. So, well, those are the, are the main. Those are definitely like the first ones that come to mind, oh, but they're okay. not by no means the only ones. <laughs> okay, okay, well, amazing. Uh, we can see that video games are a really important part of you. So, which are your favorite video games? I am a huge Soulsborne fan. So, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, Elden Ring. I love those games. I grew up playing Final Fantasy, but I haven't played as many of the newer games. And of course, Zelda has always been a big one for me. And I got really into the God of War remake. I thought that was fabulous. Okay. And how did you relate those video games to literature? So the first thing that comes to mind, and I feel so bad because it's one of my series that isn't translated in Spanish, um, but the immediate one that comes to mind, Bloodborne heavily inspired my Loom Saga, which is a steampunk, gas lamp, ma magic meets machine. The other one that comes to mind is actually for um, El Despertar de Bruja de Aire. El Despertar de Bruja de Aire. I will get it. I will get it. Um, but I loved Zelda and um, the Wind Waker Zelda game. And so Wind Walker is the name of the sorceress that Vala is in English. And that was where it came from because I was just like, Wind Waker, Wind Walker. And that was how that came to be. Okay. Well, now talking about this book particularly, uh, a deal with the king of the of the elves. A deal with the elf king in English, uh, but uh, very okay. close. Same uh, same difference. Same, same, <laughs> same, same difference. Okay. What can you tell us about this book? So this book is a standalone fantasy romance. It is set in the world of Midscape, and there are five books total set in the world of Midscape. Three of them are out now in Spanish. The fourth is coming out soon. I don't know the exact release date, but I know it's soon. And this one in particular is about a young woman who is a healer in her town. And her town kind of all pulled money together to send her to school so she could learn how to be a healer, to come back, to take care of them. Except one day, the King of the Elves comes from across the fade from this magical world of Midscape and says, you're my bride. And so now she's taken to Midscape and she feels very torn because she feels a strong sense of duty to her town and the people she loves, but also she has a role to play as the human queen. And of course, they don't get along at the start, but they do get along by the end. And there's a happily ever after. In all of my Married to Magic books, they end happy. Okay, we hope to see that happily ever after. <laughs> okay, well, uh, talking about Luella, the main, yes. the main character. Uh, she's sort of the chosen one, but in this case, the chosen bride. So what made you make her the chosen bride? Well, if she wasn't the chosen bride, there wouldn't be a story. But <laughs> I liked the idea of the way it's set up is there's always a human queen because before the worlds were at war and the different peoples were at war, and part of the peace treaty was there would be a human queen offered to the elf king every generation. And so that human queen has an innate magic to her and that magic sort of just chose Luella and she was that chosen bride for this generation. Okay, well, now, uh, how do you feel with all of your work being translated into Spanish? For example, with the Air Awakens series, uh, just like two months ago, uh, we had the third book in the series, now in Spanish, uh, the Sorcerer's Trials, the mm -hmm. Witch Trials, we are already having it in Spanish. Uh, the fourth book in the tie to, no, what? Married with ma married married, to Magic. Married to Magic. Uh, it's coming soon. How do you feel with your work being in Spanish? I am so lucky. I've met such incredible people like you. Thank and you. I, I'm just blown away by the love that these books have received all around the world and especially from my Spanish readers. And... 
I just feel very, very, very lucky. I don't think there's any other word for it and grateful. And while I know not every book is for everyone, I do hope that if you try my books, you enjoy them. Okay, and when you were writing these books, um, did you ever imagine these books being translated in Spanish? No, never. I, when I was writing the books, when I first started writing, I didn't even think about being published. It wasn't until I finished the series that I thought, well, I have books, maybe I should try publishing them. And when I did publish, I queried literary agents and they all rejected me. So I independently published in the US. And when you're an independent author, you don't have an agent, you don't have people going out there to try and sell your books or anything. And so I could have never dreamed that this would happen, that I would be here. Well, it was amazing that it actually happened and it, it's happening. Okay. Yes. Okay, well, um, a few moments ago, well, not moments, hours mm -hmm. ago, I saw a post on your Instagram that says that you're writing your next novel. So what's coming next for Elvis Kova? So in 2025, and of course, this is talking about the English editions. There's always, um, there can be delays in tra for translations or just timing of releases. So I don't want to promise when things will be out in Spanish. Um, But for 2025, I, one of my big releases is called Arcana Academy, which is a book uh, that it's almost like an adult Harry Potter, but the magic is all tarot, mm -hmm. is kind of a, a way that you could describe it, I guess. But it is about a woman who engaged in illegal magics, and then the prince basically hires her, more or less, to steal something from his father, the king, for him. Um, except to keep her safe, of course, he has to marry her. So that's the, uh, the fun twist there. Um, don't worry, there's no spoilers in that. <laughs> that's all, that's all, that all happens in like the first three chapters. And so that's one of my big projects. And then I have another secret project that I can't talk about yet. But I'm very excited and I should be able to talk about it more soon, but it will be for 2025. Okay, we hope that information soon. <laughs> well, those are all, all, are all the questions we have for you. So thank you so much, Elise, for being here in Mexico. We hope you enjoy your staying here. And anything you want to say to, to the readers? Well, first, thank you for all of the fabulous questions. And thank you to all of the readers for reading. I couldn't do what I do without you. And getting a chance to be here and to meet you and to talk to you, it's just... It's a dream for me. So thank you so much for reading and being a part of my worlds. Thank you so much, Oli. Y pueden encontrar la gran mayoría de los libros ya traducidos al español de Elis Cova.